All right. All tech is debt. All of it. Let's take a look at some tech debt. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, too far. There we go. That, that is some shiny tech debt. Am I right? <laughs> it's electric. It's, it, it's got self-driving capabilities. This is some amazing, amazing tech debt. Ooh, planetary scale tech debt. Hyper interconnected fiber optic tech debt. And the latest tech debt, this one's got 12 megapixel cameras and this tech debt even has dark mode. <laughs> so all tech is debt. Are you convinced? That's okay, we got 28 more minutes. Hi, my name's Dave and I'm a developer advocate with Google Cloud. I've been doing this a long time and whatever this is, is something I've been doing. I've been a product manager, a CTO, uh, engineer, database type, all the things. And I'm here to talk to you about how tech debt maybe isn't such a bad thing. Let's take a look. First of all, what the heck is tech debt anyway? Well, to be honest, I think it's a bit of a know it when I see it kind of thing, right? It's tech debt's the stuff that has that tech debt smell. But to be more specific, blah, blah, blah. But I think tech debt is this. Tech debt's that stuff where you open up and look at it and you say, yeesh, I'm gonna fix that later. <laughs> now, we spend a lot of time hunting down tech debt, trying to contain it, exterminate it, prevent it. But I'm here to tell you, it's not gonna happen. And that leads to some, some rough feelings. It feels like, you know, no matter what you do, no matter how much time you spend on tech debt, it never gets any better, right? Tech debt guilt. Oh, my code's so bad. And, you know, you talk about it with your friends, you're like, I'm sure you've done this, you're bragging about it. You see that, that application over there? It looks good, right? I'm telling you, underneath, it's garbage. Ha <laughs> ha, check me out. <laughs> or you might get into tech debt anger, where it's like my manager won't let me fix my stuff, my boss won't let me fix my stuff, I'm gonna be so glad when it all breaks and I'll show them. And then you realize that doesn't get you anywhere and you have tech debt sadness. It's everywhere, it's not going anywhere. Chin up little pups. I'm here to tell you that it's okay. In fact, it's better than okay. It's irrelevant. Because first of all, debt isn't necessarily a bad thing. So I remember when I bought my apartment and my friends would say, congratulations, you own an apartment. And I would say, I don't own an apartment. I own a massive pile of debt. Anyone here who's ever had a mortgage, you, right? I went from having assets to having a huge deficit. I am, I am negative wealthy. So I was like, what are you congratulating me for? But then I realized they were right. It was worthy of congratulation because I had something. I had a cool new place to live, bigger and better, and then you know what, a few years later, I sold that place and I made money off of it. Now, do you think I made money by paying down all of my principal on my mortgage? No. <laughs> I made money because the price went up. So that debt was really good debt. Here's the other thing about tech debt. You can't escape it. It's always going to be there. You're gonna have to learn to live with it. So first of all, let's take a look at how everything is tech debt. And I'm gonna convince you of that. So first of all, can we agree on this? If it doesn't give you value, it's debt. Now, let's take a look. This is all your tech stack, right? Look at all that crazy stuff in there. All of that is stuff that your users don't know about, don't care about. It's not helping your users at all. It's debt. The only part that might be some value is the business logic, right? That's the stuff that your business runs on. Except here's the thing, your competitors have that too, right? So most of that isn't actual value, it's just the cost of doing business. The only thing that might possibly have some value, this tiny little bit right here, the stuff that you have and your competitors don't. So that's not debt, right? Yeah, yeah it is. And here's why. Tech is constantly changing. No one can argue with me on that one, right? Changing like crazy. And that means by the time you've shipped something, it's already old. You've designed it and you built it in a world that no longer exists. 
that means it's already debt the second it leaves, uh, leaves your repo. Here's a debt smell. This is when you have to, uh, when it uh, takes extra time to work on something before you can you know, make progress on it, right? You ever have that, you dig it up and you gotta figure it out and you're like, who's the jerk who wrote this? And you realize it's you. <laughs> that time that it takes, when is, when is it that you don't have to spend that time re-understanding something? It only happens in one case, which is when you just wrote it. It's still in your head then and it's gorgeous, it's beautiful. And then you write it down and you forget most of it, that's on purpose, and you ship it away. By the time it's like deployed to prod, it is long gone, and it's debt. You know another thing that's debt? Those pesky users. Because here's the thing about debt, right, is that if you can't just fix it, that's a, a debt smell. Like, I, oh, I want to change that, but I'm not allowed to. And what's a big reason why you can't do it? Because someone's using it. That's why you can't just turn it off fix it, and turn it back on again. So every user that your system has adds another bit of tech debt. In fact, think about that serious hairball, that nasty, nasty thing that you hate so much, that worst tech debt. Why can't you just throw it away? Because people are using it. In fact, the thing that the people use the most is the thing that you're gonna have the hardest time making changes to. That old, crappy, horrible thing your business is built on that thing. So that dumpster fire is actually your greatest asset. But it's worse than that. Because not only is all tech debt, all tech is a ticking time bomb. Think about a zero day exploit. That zero day, that's not the day that a thing was written. That's the day that someone figured it out. It was in your code before then. It's in all of our code right now. And we're using our fancy CICD systems to pump out exploits faster and faster to our users. <laughs> All of our tech is a ticking time bomb. But it kind of doesn't matter. Let's take a look here. So I'm going to talk about potatoes. When I make mashed potatoes, here's how I make them. First, I pick out beautiful potatoes. Perfect, you know, Yukon gold, all equally sized unblemished skin, and then I peel them super smooth into these beautiful pebbles. And then I cut them up into perfectly sized cubes. And then I boil them. And then I mash the hell out of them! So no one knew and no one cared how beautiful my cubes were. I had something happen like this back when I was at my startup. It was actually as I was leaving the startup. And um, before we had had any kind of an exit, but I had, I had had my time and I was exiting. And I had this system, it was a subscription system. And on the way out, I was like, oh, that thing's full of tech debt. I don't want the next person, my, my um, successor, to inherit that. So I'm gonna do a bunch of work here and really clean this up. And oh my God, I made that thing beautiful. I rebuilt all the surface with a, a REST API, which was the hotness at the time. And I put it into the cloud and I made it scalable with auto scaling groups and really well documented. It was gorgeous. I wrapped it up in a bow. My successor came in and to his credit, threw it away and replaced it with a SaaS service that did most of the same thing. So I knew that I had delivered something of beauty. I'm still very proud of that. It was useless. You have this saying, no one wants to see how the sausage is made. Have you ever seen how sausage is made? I have. I've seen it. I've seen, I've actually, I've, I've done it myself. I've been to factories. It's disgusting. Did I stop eating sausage? No, because sausage is delicious. So I want to tell you a different story. Uh, you probably don't want to watch this anymore. I want to tell you a different story. I mentioned that, that time that I was paying down all that tech debt, right? What was I not doing at the time? Well, I wasn't paying attention to our other products. Now this other product, this was, this was debt incarnate. It was a Java app. It had a bunch of stuff in struts. A third of that was replaced with Spring. A third of that was custom libraries. It had uh, Hibernate, it had MyBattis, it had custom SQL. It had this reporting system that absolutely no one understood. Literally, we did not know how it worked. Even though we were the same people who built it, we forgot. And our customers would ask for changes and we would goof around it and everything. And I was just ignoring that whole application, I just didn't want to touch it. A Couple of years later, 
company got acquired. Did they get acquired because of my beautiful tech debt free thing that I've been working on? No. Or the thing that the, my successor replaced it with? No. It was based on that horrible hairball that everyone got a payout and the investors got their money back. But you don't have to just listen to me. Let's look at some tales of debt. These are some horror stories. You ready? All right. All right. This is a programming language. This programming language has been around for a long time. And it's had a bunch of features glommed onto it, like really like clunky implementations of generics and of lambdas. And it, it actually can't run on any hardware. It needs this like extra virtualization layer to do anything. And on top of that, it has a feature in it that its own inventor called a billion dollar mistake. So this must be a terrible failure, right? Oh, oh I've used that. How about a communications platform? All right. This one was designed for asynchronous, slow communication of text messages. And people are just abusing the hell out of it, putting video on and synchronous communications. It's a stateless protocol. So people have jerry-rigged all these stateful things on it so we can do something that anyone cares about. And every day there is a new security flaw in this communications platform. So everyone's going to be running away from it in droves, right? It's actually kind of successful. All right, let's look at a container orchestration platform. Now, actually, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with Kubernetes as far as I know. I just have to say Kubernetes at least once every talk or they take away my DevOps card. <laughs> but I will say this. It does have over 2 million lines of code, or should I say 2 million lines of debt. Now, let's look at living in the beautiful, clean, debt-free world. These, these are going to be some success stories. You ready? So, okay, this one is an operating system. Operating systems get really clunky. So someone built this beautiful operating system, object-oriented architecture all the way down, amazing parallel, multi-threading parallelism, an awesome UI. This must be on everyone's desktop, right? Do have people even heard of this one? Uh. <laughs> okay. Oh, how, about, uh, how about social networking? You know, I mean, a lot changed since the days of MySpace and you know, new features and a lot of cruft is built up. So what if you had a clean slate, built it from the ground up on really great, strong principles? I mean, heck, Facebook's based on PHP. Surely a modern language could deliver a better platform, right? Ooh. All right, this next one's good. This was a system where the, the code, the source, had been around for decades, literally, and unchanged. And I mean, my God, it was so, so old. And so they did a whole Greenfield project. They completely restarted from, from fresh. They did a lot of user studies. Uh, they did testing. They really went for it and made a brand new Greenfield re-implementation. It wasn't quite the seller that they wanted. But I don't mean to say that tech debt is a good thing, exactly. You know, all things being equal, we'd rather not have any. And so if you uh, have more than you want, there are ways. And I'm going to talk about some ways that you can get rid of some of that tech debt by getting rid of some of that tech. I just want to make a moment to appreciate my son here. Out of the mouths of babes, my son said this to me the other day. Oh, I'm so, so proud. <laughs> so first of all, open source. If you've got tech that does something that someone else is going to do for you, use it. It's free. And that means that the problems in it, the debt, are not your problems. They're someone else's problems. Now, even if you are you know, really responsible and engaged and want to say, well, it's my problem too, you have help. You can share the load. Even better, pay someone so that you don't have to think about it. If there is a hosted provider, a SaaS service, any way you can simply just get that code away, that is a win. And so you can focus on what matters to your customers. This way, you can't even see the debt, let alone have any uh, thing to do about it. It's locked away. It's proprietary. If you are a worrier, though, and you need something to worry about, I, I can give you things to worry about. First off, product debt. Think about your customer service people. Think about um, your overloaded manuals. Uh, and uh, think about workarounds. All of those things are likely to be places where your product is not meeting your customer needs. That's debt. 
How about relationship debt? Are you spending so much time worrying about your tech that you're not really paying attention to the people around you? Or self-care debt, you matter too. Take yourself out to the movies or, or, or to the spa, whatever it is. Don't worry so much about that perfect tech. It's never gonna be perfect. Because you know what? You can't win. Tech is a really, really bad investment. Think about the cell phone you bought five years ago. How much did you spend on that? 300 bucks, 500 bucks, 800 bucks? How much is that phone worth now? But I got good news for you. I'm gonna tell you about a surefire investment. This one pays dividends. It's your team. In this crazy fast world of tech, you can win by investing in a team. Your users don't care about your tech. They want a service, a product, an experience. And the best thing you can do is to deliver something to them as fast as possible before the bur crushing burden of tech debt has a chance to catch up to you. And the only way to do that is to build a strong team that can understand your customers and deliver quickly. And that means investing in the team <laughs> by building build, uh, skills of your team, build culture, build communication practice, importantly, build empathy, and keep teams together. Don't think project teams that are trying to deliver some tech. Think product teams that are trying to evolve a relationship with the customer. Because when it all is said is done, tech is debt. Burn it. People are gold. Cherish them. And me, I'm Dave, and that's it. Thank you. We how, have time. How, how crazy under time am I? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, so we have time for questions, which I think is good. Um, who's got one? So how do you measure risk? How do you compare that with debt? Oh, you, sh debt. you should go back in time and come to my talk last week in Columbus. <laughs> it's all about how measuring risk is really hard and we don't know how to do it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not what you'd call an inspirational speaker. <laughs> Um, you know, really tough question. I mean, a lot of it's by experience, I would say. I mean, all of my feelings about risk is, is based on instinct from having failed at a million things. Um, but I would love to have more uh, rigorous ways of figuring out risk and figuring out when that tech debt is a real problem that I actually have to worry about that's messing up my efficiency. Do you have ideas? Well, I would say just the open source. <laughs> Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, well, and, that, and that's, uh, in fairness, uh, there's a trade-off here that, you know, I recommend go use open source whenever you can. I also say you're screwed because of all your vulnerabilities. Both are true. Um, but, uh, you know, the, you definitely you want to have systems that can test all these things. Um, a lot of great tools now in uh, CICD world for testing your open source vulnerabilities. But even better in my mind is uh, using hosted services where, sure, they could have vulnerabilities, but they probably won't because someone else is paid full time to make sure they don't. And their risk of a vulnerability affects their entire existence. Whereas, you know, if you're a insurance company, well, that's a bad example. But let's say you're, a, <laughs> you're selling shoes. You know, if you have a vulnerability, it's bad, but you might not be out of business. And, you know, a hosted service provider, they're done if they messed up security. Okay. Uh, who else? What kind of feedback have you gotten on your message from managers and executives? How do they feel about tech is dead and people are, are gold? So managers and executives, uh, they uh, uh, agree that they don't care about tech debt. They're often not so good about realizing that people are gold. <laughs> but um, I mean, I've heard so many people have, tell me tales of woe trying to convince their execs that they need to spend way more time paying down tech debt. And you know what? Their execs don't care. They say, ship some shit. Uh, and so I think you're actually, you can have better conversations if you talk more about delivering for, um, delivering for users, delivering on products and services, and increasing the value of the product. And then, you know, coming back to risk comp calculations, and I don't know the answer exactly, but looking at, at what point does tech debt hurt the delivery of value? And it does. But... It may not do it immediately, and it may not do it in a way that matters. And so, uh, you know, weaving tech debt in a conversation with execs that speaks to what they care about, which is 
shipping product and, and making money. Um, same is true of worrying about people. You know, make sure that it's relevant to them. Retention uh, is good because retraining is expensive. And then there was one, a question up there. <coughs> Hi, thank you. Uh, first of all, great talk. Thank you. So you talked about moving stuff to open source or finding SaaS solutions, which makes sense in isolation. But I wonder, like, down the road, am I putting myself out of a job? Like, what's left? Do we have any tech? Yes, you are. And that's the goal. Um, <laughs> the, there was a talk, I think it was in this room, uh, someone had a great quote of, like, you know, hire people who will automate themselves out of a job and then give them more jobs. So you know, if someone else can deliver that thing uh, for, service, for, uh, for a fee and do it fast and reliable, you're going to be out of a job of that thing regardless. Put yourself out of that job, show your value to the company, move on to the next thing. No one in this industry is at any risk of not having job opportunities. One last round, anybody? One up there, oh that's me. Um, so at what point are you willing to deploy out a fair amount of tech debt? Um, sorry, I tried to formulate it. <laughs> Part of it, from what I'm understanding, is you're trying to get to the market faster. Um, so I guess at what point do you accept the debt that you have and then deem it worth to go out versus going back and actually shaving off some of the debt? No, oh, I have an easy answer for you. As soon as you can possibly flip and ship it, do so. Uh, the value of your tech only gets worse over time. The value of product market fit is priceless. So anything that you can get to your user and prove out that they want this thing, that is valuable. And if you can hold up, if, if it is reliable enough, just barely for them not to sue you, that's success. <laughs> Grow the business, be, find a customer that wants what you are able to give them, then worry about that reliability. One thing, uh, I, a slide that I sometimes present uh, in this topic is the Twitter fail whale. And I put that up and I say, oh my God, that is so beautiful. From a product perspective, that means people wanted that thing. And look, Twitter's still around. Uh, for every one of those, there's you know, a dozen companies that were over-productionalized, over-optimized, and never got off the ground. Cool. Uh, well, once again, thank you, Deb. Dave. Thank you. Um,